Hi there. My name is Joy Lambert, and I am a reference and instruction librarian at Pollock Library. This video will be an introduction to the database called ERIC. ERIC is an education-focused database and also a great place to look when researching topics related to children. The acronym ERIC stands for Education Resources Information Center and is sponsored by the Institute of Education Sciences of the U.S. Department of Education. In this database, you will find ERIC documents, which are reports or studies sponsored by government agencies, as well as scholarly, peer-reviewed journal articles. To get to the database, first go to the library's homepage, library.fullerton.edu. From there, click on the databases icon. Once you get to this page, you can use the alphabetical list at the top to select E, and then scroll down until you find ERIC. If you are off campus, you'll be asked to proxy in. Just use your portal login information to get started. Once in ERIC, you'll see the search options or filters available in the database. These are available to you before or after your search. Because ERIC is education focused, you will see filters that reflect that and I would like to point out a few. Here you see a box you can check for peer-reviewed articles. Sometimes your professors will require you to use peer-reviewed articles for your research. Most library databases have a box you can check for peer-reviewed articles. You'll also see a box you can check for IES, or Institute of Education Sciences funded reports. Another helpful limiter is education level. If you scroll through, you will see there are both general and specific education levels you can select. So let's say I was working on a research project that wanted to answer the question, how do dual immersion programs affect language acquisition? From that research question, I will pick out the keywords or search terms that I want to put into the database. Research databases are not like Google. You can't put in a question because it will confuse the database. So you need to pick out the keywords you can put into search. I'd also encourage you to think of other similar words or synonyms you can use to describe the concepts you are researching. Sometimes the keywords we first think of don't always work as well in the databases as we hope, and we have to retool the search a bit. So for my first search, I will put dual immersion programs in the first box and language acquisition in the second. I like to keep each concept in its own box. That way, if I have to modify the search using different keywords, everything stays organized. Now I'll click search. So that first search didn't bring back that many results. I'm going to try to broaden my search using the Boolean connector OR. So I will add bilingual education in the first box and connect my terms with OR. I will add language development in the second box and also connect with OR. So that search brought back many more results. Now I'm going to use some of the tools in the left margin to help me refine my results a bit. First, I'll narrow to peer-reviewed articles. Next, I want to find articles that were written fairly recently, so I'm going to use the publication date limiter to narrow to articles published within the last 10 years. I'll type in 2010 and hit enter, but you can also use the sliding tool. Sometimes your professors will also want you to focus on U.S. populations. If you don't have a lot of results, you might not see a geography limiter. For my list, I do see that, so I'm going to click to open it and then click Show More. Sometimes you will see United States or U.S. as an option. For this results list, I'm seeing individual states listed, so I'll click All U.S. States Available and then click Update. Because my list is now pretty manageable, I'm going to start looking through my results. However, if I wanted to, I could take a look at the subject limiter, which will narrow by subject headings. Using that will narrow my results to articles that have assigned to them the subject headings that I select. 
As I start to look through the results list, I can tell what articles are available full text in ERIC. Any that have HTML full text or PDF full text can be accessed by clicking on the link. However, I'd really encourage you to look at all of the articles in your list and not just the ones that have full text in the database you are searching, because the full text might be in another library database. I'll talk more about that in a moment. In ERIC, you'll also see articles that have listed under them full text from ERIC. If you click on that link, you'll be taken to a page like this where you can download the full text. Looking through the list, if I click on the title of any of the articles, I'll be taken to what is called the record for the article. The record contains all of the descriptive information about the article, including what is needed to build a citation, as well as the abstract, which is just a brief summary of the article. If I read the abstract and decide I want to read the full text of the article for my research, then I'm going to look for how I can access the full text. In the record, the links for full text will be in the left margin. From the full text, you can email yourself the article by clicking on the envelope icon in the right margin putting your email address and clicking send. You can also download the PDF to your computer. If the full text is not available in this database, look for the Find It at Pollock Library button. Clicking on Find It at Pollock Library will prompt Eric to check with the other library databases. If the full text is in any of those, there will be a link to it. If it's not available in any library databases, there will be an option to request it from another library. Just click on the Sign In for More Options button, log in with your portal login, and follow the prompts to make your request. It may take some time to get the articles though, possibly as long as a week. So start your research early so that you will have time to get any articles you might have to request. Eric also has a citation tool. When you are in the record for the article, You'll see it in the right margin. It reads Cite and it looks like a little yellow sheet of paper. Clicking on that will give you examples of how to cite this article in multiple citation styles including MLA, APA, and Chicago. These examples, however, are rarely 100% correct, so use this as your starting point and then double check with your style manual or other citation resource to make any necessary corrections. Another tool I'd like to point out is the permalink function. Sometimes when students do research and they find an article they'd like to read later, they either bookmark it or copy and paste the URL somewhere. Unfortunately, these links are not stable and will change over time. I have helped a lot of students who tried to keep track of their articles this way, and when they went back to either read or cite the article, they couldn't get back to it. One way to avoid this is to use the permalink, and you can find it here in the right margin. Looks like a little link icon. When you click on that, it will show you a permalink or a stable link. And if you keep a list of those, you should be able to get back to the articles you found while searching. And there you have an overview of Eric, a great resource for education-focused research. Happy researching!